major makeover. The dock to be refurbished. A man accused of attempted murder learning his fate today. We have the details straight ahead. A slippery situation. The Senate discusses an oil issue. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. A long-awaited multi-million dollar upgrade is on the way for one of the island's docks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a long time coming, but a major facelift is on the way for Potter's Key Dock. Cleopatra Murphy tonight tells us about the scope of the work to be done and how the port will be transformed. The eastern end of Potter's Key Dock is set to undergo a $3.1 million facelift that will not only result in beautification, but increased security at the port. Closed circuit TV and signage will be installed and the lighting improved. Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, says BEC's transformer will be relocated to establish security checkpoints. The police station is now open 24 hours as well. That will be one of the um, significant features of Port Ski Dock. Secure a more secure facility, and that is, you know, for the reasons that the controller spoke of, um, not contraband and other any other issues that impinge upon the national security of our country. We will seek to manage as it relates to this facility in conjunction with the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Hannah Martin says work will also include the removal and relocation of trees for a parking area, removal of debris and abandoned boats, and an extension at the fish and farm store. She says all this work will accommodate mailboat operators. She says the entrance will also be repaired and restricted to pedestrian traffic and delivery vehicles along with permanent curbs added to the end of the dock. This ext extension will accommodate freight holdings, bulkhead curbings, a passenger waiting area and bathrooms will be installed. So we're now going to have an area for passengers who travel by mailboat to, to be seated in a secure uh, environment safe from the elements. The project will take place in three phases over a 16-month period. Michael Pateman, senior architect with the Antiquities, Monuments and Museum Corporation, says the historical Porter's Key Battery, built in the 1780s, will also be renovated at a cost of $60,000. In 1990, we did some work here, some archaeological work and some restoration work. But now the battery is falling into disrepair. It's used by the vagrants. And so the plans for us are to restore the battery once again, include a view-in platform or deck so people can actually come in and view the, the battery and include some historical signage about the battery, when it was built and why it was built. Trenching started Monday to determine the needs of the utilities companies. Officials say they intend to create a port facility that is clean, environmentally friendly and conducive to business for the public. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. A young man learning his fate today for the attempted murder of his former girlfriend. As Foreign Carry reports, the convict was also ordered to pay compensation to the victim. Old Denez Young was sentenced to 10 years behind bars Thursday and ordered to pay compensation of $4,000 to his former girlfriend, Indira Thompson, after a jury convicted him earlier of stabbing her multiple times on her face and bosom two years ago. Thompson now has permanent scars and also lost a finger during the attack. Court evidence revealed that Young used marijuana frequently prior to the attack. A psychiatrist also noted in his probation report that on the day the incident happened, Young had just lost his job and Thompson had just informed him that she wanted out of the relationship. The psychiatrist noted that his frequent use of marijuana and his circumstances at the time triggered the attack. The court also noted that Young was extremely remorseful and had offered to pay compensation and was extremely respectful to the court. Crown Prosecutor Patrick Sweeting had asked the court to sentence Young to 20 years in prison. However, Young's attorney, Jerome Manger, asked 
for probation. In the end, Justice Charles sentenced Young to 10 years in prison due to the special circumstances of the case. However, she ordered that he receive psychotherapy and counseling. She also ordered that he spend the last three years of his sentence at Sandilands so that he can be monitored prior to his release. Outside court, relatives of the convict and the victim clashed, with the victim alleging that she had been threatened, prompting the police to intervene. Now, Young was also ordered to pay a compensation of $4,000 to the victim, and he has by the end of the year to do that. If he doesn't, four more years will be added on to his sentence, and that will run consecutively. Fern Carey, CNS Network News. Also from the courts, the prosecution has closed its case in the abetment to murder trial of Kervin Neely. Neely is accused of killing 17-year-old Enrico Major back on June 1st of last year. The teen was brutally stabbed to death near the S.C. McPherson Junior High School. During today's proceedings, Crown Prosecutor Aaron Johnson tendered into evidence the certificate of conviction of Dwayne Peter Lockhart, who pleaded guilty to killing Major last week. The, cake was then, the case was then adjourned to 11 Friday morning. Attorney Glendon Roll is defending Neely. Police have also charged 20-year-old Nassau Street resident Dejeron Moss with the March 18th murder of Alfred Ferguson. Ferguson was, police say, sitting in the front of a residence on West Avenue with another man. This is off Carmichael Road, by the way. And a man armed with a handgun fired several shots at them. Ferguson died on the scene from his injuries, and the other male was transported to hospital. In court, Moss was not required to enter a plea to the murder charge. Bail was denied, and he was remanded to prison. He returns to court on May 28th for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. A judge has refused to grant bail to Tyrone Knowles. Knowles and another man are accused of robbing Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis, his wife Anne Marie Davis, and Davis's driver Wilberforce Seymour back in December of 2013. During Knowles' bail hearing, his attorney Richard Boodle asked the court to release him on bail, noting that the 26-year-old has no previous convictions and conditions can be imposed by the court. However, Crown Prosecutor Linda Evans opposed the bail application on the ground that he might abscond and the court agreed. Coming up, BTC responds to a million dollar fine. And second service. The Minister of Social Services says the government doing more to help those on assistance. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles.